Okay, so we will proceed to the next part after the seat work. So hopefully you should and you had already uploaded your answer to secret number one sa canvas and we'll proceed to the next lesson so uh, we can represent uh, an events and the sample space using Venn diagram so this is an example of a Venn diagram where we have two events A and B and the sample space is given by the uh, square so I think yung buong square niyan is the sample set and the circles are the event A and B. And the different, different relationship among events could be represented by a Venn diagram. So this one is a union where the orange part is the elements containing or the events A and B. And when you say the union of A and B, the orange part or the element present on that orange part is the part of that uh, interaction the next one is the intersection for this one so as you can see this is an intersection of the event a and b and the orange part is the element uh, only presence in their intersection if you have three events then you can represent the uh, intersection of the union of a and b with c as this one so only the elements presence in this orange region while for uh, the complement of the intersection of a and c is the orange part so the intersection of the event ac is this one the light color or the one with the, the uh, black uh, line and that is the element of the, the intersection of a and c but this is a complement so meaning we're referring to the elements presence outside here present outside that value so the orange one the sample set so this is a much more bigger uh venn diagram so if you have two events the complement of a this is your event a and the orange is the complement of a this is the intersection so event a and b the intersection is the orange one this one is the intersection, the orange area. If you have a mutually exclusive event, so this is just a review, meaning there's no intersection, or the intersection of event A and B is a null set. So there's no intersection. There are no, no elements present in the intersection of the union. So the relationship among events, so we have that the union of an event and its complement, it complement, is thus the sample space for any set A. And for mutually exclusive, the intersection of these two events A and B is just an empty set. So by distributive law, so we just apply the same principle with, with algebra or mathematics. So if you have the uh, union of B and C and you get its intersection with A, this is just the same as getting the union of the intersection of A and B and the intersection of A and C. If you're getting the uh, union of A with the intersection of B and C, then this is just the same as the intersection of the union of uh, event A and B and then uh, inter uh, union of A and C. For De Morgan's law, uh, it's just simple state that the complement of the union of A and B is just equal to the intersection of the complement of A and the complement of B. While the union of uh, the complement of the union of A and B is this equal to the intersection of the complement of A and the complement of B. Okay, another other relationship is that the intersection of an event A and a null set is just the empty set or a null set also. The union of event A and a null set or an empty set is just A. The intersection of A and its complement is a null set. And the union of A and its complement is the sample space. 
the complement of the sample space is the empty set and the complement of the empty set is the sample space. The complement of complement of A is just your event A. So you can just utilize this relationship among them. So these are a uh, Venn diagram showing uh, De Morgan's law. This is uh, the intersection or the complement. You have this one, the intersection of E1 and E2 is just the same. If you get the complement, sorry, complement of this intersection is just this uh, clear grid zone. Okay, so this one, this is your uh, event one, and this is the complement of event one. This one is event two and the complement of event two. So double hatch grid zone is uh, the the complement. Uh, another means of uh, representing or notation for complements is the one with the bar, okay? not just the apostrophe. So this one is the uh, the uh, De Morgan school where uh, the complement is one. The complement of the intersection of event one and two. Is just the same as getting the intersection of the complement of E1 and the complement of E2. Okay, another one. Union of E1 and the uh, intersection of the complement of E1 and E2 is represented by this one. Yung E2 is this region and this one is yung E1 and the intersection of the complement of E1 and E2 is this region. Okay, another one is this one. This is the intersection of E1 and E2. Then diagram. So for mutually exclusive event, so we symbolically denote this one, meaning there's no occurrence for both A and B of that element. That so for uh, mutually exclusive events, so we have the cumulative, distributive, and associative. Events. So we can utilize this. So for mutually exclusive event, we have the Morgan's complement law as your uh, utilization for uh, some events. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? So we can ask questions during our uh, synchronous class. Okay, let's proceed with probability. So for probability, this is just a measurement of how an event will happen or the likelihood or a chance that an outcome or an event will came out using your random experiment. So basically, we'll utilize the sample space and the event. So the probability value is ranging from 0 to 1. So 0 meaning uh, that probability is... Uh, nil or no possible outcome while well, one is that uh, the probability it will happen in the convention so certain and impossible okay types of probability so we have subjective and relative frequency probability so for subjective probability is a degree of belief so there is a 50 percent chance that i'll study tonight so that's just a degree of belief because it will depend on on yours uh, exclusively. Well, for relative frequency probability, so this is the one that we use, is based on how often an event occurs over a very large sample space. So this is an example of the limit of your n of a over n as n approaches infinity. So whenever you have a sample space with n possible outcomes, the probability of an outcome, one outcome, is just 1 over n. So that's the outcome of each value. Example, I have 100 diodes, one is laser diode. So the probability that a laser diode will be taken from the batch of a diode is 1 to 100 or 0 0.01. Because that's the equally likely to happen. So meaning very independent. Okay? For discrete sample, the probability of an is denoted by the probability of E equals to the sum of the probability of the outcomes 
of the element in event E. So the discrete sample space may be a finite set of outcome or a countable infinite set of outcomes. So let's have this okay. So let's have this example. Probability of events. A random experiment has a sample space A, B, C, and B. These outcomes are equally likely. So the probability of each value for A is 0.1, for B is 0.3, for C is 0.5, and for D is 0.1. So the total probability should be equal to 1. Let say event A, which contains your A and B, happen, and let event B which contains B, C, and D happens, and your event C, which contains element D happens. So let's say, what is the probability of A? So for that probability, for A, we have A and B, so you just get the value for A and B. So that's point 0.1 plus point. Dalila, diba? So meaning, kung ano yung probability ng element small A and B, that's element A and B, you just add them because that's the one contained in B. Okay, so for element B, so you just add B, C, D, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1. So that will be equal to 0 0.9. Okay, for point, uh, for probability for event C to happen, this is just 0.1. So what did be the complement of A? So point for yung A, so the probability ng complement of A will be 0.6. So 1 minus Point one. Take note that the total probability of your uh, sample space should be equal to 1. And for probability of the complement of B, that will be 0.1. And for probability of the complement of C, that will be 0.9. Okay, let's see. When we say that the intersection of A and B, I mean intersection of A and B, I mean lang yung pareho. So we have B, B. Wala nang A, walang C and D na pareho. So basically, it contains only B. So the probability of the intersection of event A and B is equal to, ano lang yung probability ng B, which is 0.3. Okay, another one. So if we have the intersection of uh, A and B, so intersection, so naulit yung B, so you just represent it as B. So A, B, C, D. So lahat ng element present. So basically, this is just equal to 1. Then, the intersection of A and C, wala. So null set, so the probability is 0. So null set, so walang pareho, walang common element, so 0 yung probability. So it will not going to happen. So meaning, A and C are mutually exclusive. Okay, so let's have the action of probability. So probability is a number that is assigned to each member of a collection of experiment from a random experiment that satisfy the following property. If you have the sample space S and an event E will happen from a random experiment, then the probability of the sample space is equal to 1. And the probability of your event, that's the second action, is from 0 to 1 inclusive. So for any two events, Event 1 and event 2 with mutually exclusive sila, meaning the intersection of E1 and P2 is 0. Then the probability of the intersection of E1 and E2 is equal to the probability of each event. Probability of event 1 plus the probability of event 2. Meaning the probability of an null set is equal to 0 and the probability of a complement of E is just equal to 1 minus the probability of if event 1 is contained in event 2, meaning mas malaki yung event 2 and nasa loob niya yung event 1, then the probability of event 2 is greater than the probability of event 1. Now, for addition rule, joint events are generated by applying the basic set operation to individual events. Specifically, specifically union of events A and B intersection of A and B, complements of event A. Probability of joint events can often be determined from the probability of individual events that comprise them. Okay, let's have this example and we'll end the recording. A whopper is randomly selected from a batch that is classified by contamination and location. So let's say that 
H be the event of high concentration of contaminant. So, high concentration, pH, contaminant. So, ito yun, yung total, kasi high. So, 3, 5, 8 over 9, 40, yung total. Let's see, be the event of the wafer being located at the center of a sputtering tooth. So, the probability of C, which is the center, ito yun, center, is 626 over 9, 40. So, this is a fraction. So, when you get the intersection of your H and C, meaning high concentration it at the center. So, high concentration. So, ito lang. Saka, center. So, ito yon. So, 112 over 90. So, if we're going to present the union naman. So, the probability of union is that you add the probability of H, so 358 for high, and the probability at the center, 629. So, meaning you add this three term, yung 514, 112, tsaka 216. But, two, 112 is repeated. Take note, this is not mutually exclusive, so may common siya, yung 112, so kailangan niya siyang subtract. So, this is the addition. So, let's have the probability of union. So, for any two events, A and B, the probability of union is given by the probability of union of A is just equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection of A and B. Take note, A and B here is not mutually exclusive. If the events are mutually exclusive, so, wala silang intersection, magsisiro lang to, guys. Kaya, yung probability of A or union of A and B which are mutually exclusive is just the sum of the probability of the two events. Okay, so we'll end our recording here.